You want to make some free plants out of what you already have? Awesome, because today I'm talking about water propagating pothos. It's one of my favorite plants because it's so easy to grow. It makes me feel like a plant genius. It survives under many different light levels. It makes a good gift, which is good when you're propagating so many of these. When you think of the typical office plant kind of trailing out over the cubicles, it's probably a pothos, but to me they're a really happy plant and they grow quickly and you can share them with friends. This video also stems from a mistake I recently made. I did something stupid. I sold my big golden pothos mother that I took all my cuttings out. I have had it for years. It came from my grandmother who has been gone now for at least for about 20 years. I brought it to a show, a live show that I did and I was there talking about feng shui plant styling and houseplant care and it was one of my decorations and at the end of the night a woman wanted to buy it. I said yes. Part of what I do is sell plants so why not? I didn't want to have to lug as many plants back to the car at the end of the show. So I sold it. I hope the new plant parent, plant mother, really gets a lot of joy out of that golden pothos. Makes tons of cuttings for her friends, for her families, for her future grandchildren, and that plant lives on. Life lesson, don't sell your mother. Life lesson number two, it's just a plant. So I still have a clone of my grandmother's plant. So I took cuttings before the show, not intending to sell it, but just intending to make more. That's what I'm talking about today. To propagate pothos, you'll need a few supplies. Um, Something to cut with, sharp scissors, a scalpel. I like these uh, Fiskars trimmers. Sanitize them with rubbing alcohol. Uh, you want a glass jar filled with warm water. You will also want a pothos plant with some trailing or climbing stems. Like I said, I let mine go. So I did go out to the greenhouse, got a couple different examples of pothos plants. These are four inch plants. So if you order a four inch plant, this is a size plant that would come. They've got quite a few rooted cuttings in each one. This is a Pothos Enjoy. I like the variegation. I like the spots. It's a little bit slower of a grower than Golden Pothos. Um, this is a neon, fast growing, bright. And then this is a Pothos Satin Sparkles. It's got silver um, speckles on it. Kind of looks like it's soft and velvety. Each stem here, you can see under the, the leaf has a node. You want to take a cutting, a 45 degree cutting with your trimmers, about a half inch from the bottom leaf, and then you can cut in between each leaf. So you want to leave a leaf and a node. Nodes are those small bumps on plants. Some people like to leave their stem cutting really long. Um, you can do that, totally fine. But just keep in mind that the little node where you're putting in water is where all the water for the whole two foot stem is gonna come from. So that takes a lot of energy to circulate moisture in that stem and that's energy that's not going into growth. It can look really cool on propagation stations, you know, to have long stems if they're up on the wall, coming down trailing. If you wanna make a bunch of cuttings faster, I'd cut in between each leaf or each node and just, you know, toss the pieces of stems, compost them that are in between and then take each stem and pop it in your glass of warm water. Some, you can put cuttings directly into a growing medium. I like to do it in water because I like to keep an eye on the root growth. I think it's cool, just the aesthetic of white healthy roots. Um, against you know glass clear glass and it also takes up less space on my growing shelves that plant space in my house is at a premium so if I can get a bunch of cuttings going in less space I'm gonna do that these do best in a warm location um, root growth is really best over 68 degrees Fahrenheit sometimes a windowsill can be too cool for them so I wouldn't suggest that but maybe on the kitchen counter above the Dishwasher would be great if you had a heating pad and you wanted to stimulate um, root growth with extra warmth. You could, maybe near the stove. One good thing about keeping them on the kitchen counter is, well, if you have kids, it's cool to show them the root growth, but you're also more likely to change out the water. Roots need water, but they also need oxygen. And when you ha just have the jar sitting out on the counter, oxygen is dissipating, it's being um, used by the roots too. So when you switch it out, you're bringing more oxygen to those roots. 
in about two weeks you should see roots starting to grow from the node and between four to six weeks you will get ones that have significant root growth and they're ready to pot up into soil. If you like ideas on making more plants or tips on house plants or even if, if your grandmother was a, a plant lover please hit the subscribe button. Some other plants that I've successfully propagated with stem cuttings are African violets, also from that same grandmother. She was a good influence. Uh, Chinese evergreens, coleus, love doing coleus. The kids will do them all the time. They think it's a hoot because it goes super fast. We plant them outside during the summer in New England, bring them inside um, into cuttings into water in the winter and they'll flower even in water where they're getting no nutrients. So I did do a early video about peperomia. These are green bean peperomia. Philodendrons, um, those do real, really well with uh, stem cuttings as well. And those grow quickly. Snake plant is a slower grower, but I have, um, I have had success with propagating stem cuttings for snake plants. Thank you so much for watching. 